Hi YouTube, Bad Dave here from MD Bushcraft. Uh, another great day out in the forest today and um, I'm with my friend Simon Hardy from Ashdown Forest Crafts. Uh, Simon's recently come to the northwest um, to practice his um, his craft. He, he's lived out in the forest for a long while, seven eight years was it? Uh, seven months last seven, year. Seven months last year he's been out doing what we do, the bushcraft thing, but doing it for real out there seven whole months, you know, not a weekend away. Um, Simon's crafts involves knife making and leather work and I've been lucky enough today to have a, a look at what he, he produces and, and get a hands-on feel for it and he, his stuff's really, really good. Um, so I'll hand over to Simon and he'll tell you a little, about, little bit about Ashdown Forest Crafts and um, I'll ask him a few questions. So Simon, how did it all start? Um, I always used knives. I, initially I started, I didn't really find the sort of sheath I was looking for and I started doing leather work and then people started paying me to do leather work. Um, then I moved more into wood carving, started making my own knives to do that um, and just moved on from there. I've been buying blades and handling them for ages. Um, I cut and season all the wood myself, make all the sheaths myself. Um, I've just started moving into blade making myself so that's the next thing. The next few weeks we're going to start producing our own blades from our workshop. Um, and go from there. I've, I've got a few trial ones coming out that I'm going to hand round to people, get some feedback on, see what they think, um, tweak the design a bit, hopefully start selling them. Great. Well, certainly uh, from what I've seen, um, his, his workmanship is top notch from leather work through to the blades, um, the mounting of the blades. Um, Simon said that the blades he's doing at the moment are uh, things like the Enzos uh, and like Puko type of blades that he's mounting in various exotic woods. Uh, Sam is going to show us some of those in a second and like I say I've been here lucky enough to handle them and I can certainly vouch for the quality and even at the meet we're at today I've had um, one of Simon's very happy customers coming up uh, asking me where Simon was because he wants to meet him. So um, what we'll do is I'll just pick one of Simon's blades up and he can tell, tell you more about it. So this one, Simon, what, um, do you want to tell us about the wood and the, uh, it's obviously an Enzo blade. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's being well used and loved at the moment. Yeah, that's oh. one, that's my girlfriend, she's been using that already, it was her birthday present last year. Um, it's an Enzo blade from Finland, from a company called Brisa, very good quality blades. O1 tool steel, it's got a Scandinavian grind on it, um, very good for wood carving. Um, and this one's handled in yew, which was from the Ashdown Forest that I got hold of uh, a few years ago, seasoned a load of it. And um, if you cut the wood at a slight angle, you get the grain coming around as you bookend the scale, so you get a nice sort of wrap around effect on the, on the wood. Um, lanyard tube in it, so it's easy to get out the sheath. Um, there's a friction fit bead on there, which does move. You can adjust that up to your hand size. Um, pinned on with Colby bolts um, and epoxy glue. Um, it's certainly something that I'd like to, uh, to have on my belt. And talking about having it on the belt, this is one of Simon's shoes. This is the one that goes with the blade. It uh, looks to me like 3 mil veg tan, yeah, is it? Yeah, it 3 is. mil veg tan leather. The, the stitching's gorgeous on it, um, and it's a proper heavy duty sheath. You know, um, mm. if I just take the knife from you, and if you, if you, I don't know whether you'll catch this on YouTube, but if you just listen, it's got that really nice snick, and it isn't going anywhere. So when you're using one of Simon's blades with the sheaths, you can guarantee that while you're bashing through the woods, you're not going to be losing your knife. It'd take an awful lot for you to, to, to actually lose this. You could probably have it um, on like a scout mount if, if you wanted him to make your sheath like that. Or you could have, you could, I suppose you could do it the tactical thing and have it matte black and upside down. <laughs> not that we'd like that. But um, certainly, um, from this is this is one of the first knives um, that I managed to get hold of off Simon and believe me they, they go out of the shop that fast that you are lucky to get it and uh, the reason I got hold of this is it does actually belong to his girlfriend so uh, we can sort of collar her and, and he's not allowed to sell that one <laughs> so sort of what sort of things happen where did they come from so we're gonna look at some of his um, works in progress now so some unfinished sheaths I mean this one's all been um, you know lovingly burnished and, and finished and polished and all the other things that we do um, but this is um, this is some of his other stuff so uh, would you like to take us through this one sir? yeah um, this, these sheaths haven't been finished yet um, these are ones this, this is an order for a customer uh, it's a walnut it's a puko it's uh, another um, Scandi type blade Scandi grind on it 
O1 carbon steel again. Um, this one's got a piece of antler in there with some black leather and cork spacers. Um, and the rest of the handle, the bolster and the tail piece, a walnut. Um, this is from a walnut tree that came down in the village where I live, um, well, used to live, in the 1987 hurricane. Um, so all, the, all of your blades, in essence, have a history. Yeah, they, pretty they, much. They, you know, there's, there's, there's a story behind the wood. Mm. You, you so often, in, the, in especially like bushcraft circles, you can go and get yourself uh, a mass-produced blade. You know, there's lots of pucos out there. The lot, there's lots of sort of, um, you know, the uh, common, if you like, the Raymeers type bushcraft knives. And they're mass-produced and they come from a factory somewhere in China or, or wherever. And I think it's really important that things like that, that, that you, you, you're buying a blade that you actually know the history of where the woods come from, you know where it's come down mm. from, you know the love and the, the hours of work that have been put into it. Um, unfortunately, because of the restrictions on YouTube, I can't show you the, the pure detail of this. I'll just take it from Simon and we'll try and, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's absolutely beautiful work. And the cork spaces, in my opinion, work really well. Um, it's, it's almost like a, a dappled effect that goes into, into the antler and it, it's really lovely. And likewise, I think um, it's probably almost like a signature of yours, isn't it? To cut the wood in a certain way, to, to spiral the yeah, grain. Yeah, I like it to sort of try and twist yeah. around the knife. It, it's so not it's something you see a lot of. It's, it's, um, you get a lot of uh, book-ended slabs and they tend to go straight with the grain exactly, you know, because yeah. it's, it's uniform and sometimes it, it just makes it a little bit more organic. That, that Simon's put his eye in and, and found, you know, he's finding the beauty in the wood, which, which gives it that much more interest. Um, we've got another Puko down here that, um, that he's been working on, so we'll bring that one up and he can tell us a little bit more about that one. And as you can see with a lot of Simon's blades, the handle and the sheath, the colours are very, very similar. So if you I'd, I don't know, you might get 20 people with one of Simon's knives all in the same place <laughs> and you could pretty much guarantee that you'd find your own back. So let's uh, tell, tell us a bit more about this one. Okay, um, this is another order for someone else. They've um, requested you on this one. Um, this is you from the Ashdown Forest I got from a local tree surgeon, got quite a lot of it. Um, this again, this is completely cross cut, so the grain is coming round this way it's a on the knife. Pattern, um, right, yeah. It was an interesting piece of wood, so you can see that, you know, it. It, it sort of spirals out from there um, and what I've done here I've cut the bolster from the very same section as the tailpiece so the grain were that together it would almost carry on um, and there's a bit of birch burr sandwiched in there what I try and do with the knives is the bit I sandwich in I always try and make if, if the wood's light I try and make that piece dark if um, that piece is a light colour I try and do it in a darker wood um, yeah, so I'll, you get that pop don't you the yeah. contrast it's uh... obviously ultimately it's down to what the customer wants but you know that's kind of what I try and recommend if I can. Um, again this one's going in a right handed neck sheath again um, which has yet to be wet moulded, the edge has got to be burnished yet and obviously a neck lanyard attached. Um, but again even even before it's, it's actually a finished product, the, the workmanship's exemplary. Um, you know you can look at this and, I, and again I'll take it from Simon and I'll try and show you this grain. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that but you can see the spin, if it's put the spin on it, there's this, just this gorgeous, it's almost like contour lines of a mountain that you can see on the side and that you've got all these lovely waves and, and, and the finish on it, it's, it's like a very, very fine satin feel. And it's comfortable in the hand, it's, it's, it's not too big. Um, it, it's not pretending to be anything, it's not. It's a very, very usable, um, comfortable and gorgeous looking knife in my opinion. Um, one thing we've not mentioned a lot of is like these are just two of Simon's many many knives uh, if you like a certain blade if you like a certain wood uh, certainly he'll try and source that for you um, he tries very hard he, he, he only gets the best quality woods uh, that he can find uh, he's a stickler for detail that might be a good thing, it might be a bad thing. You'll have to ask his girlfriend, she's got to live with him. But um, yeah, and, but in my opinion, if you're making something, make it beautiful, make it well, you know, I don't need to sell this. You, you can see it on the, on the web and uh, you, you just, the quality's barking out there for you, you know, come buy me, buy me. And every time I keep holding these, you know, uh, my wallet's getting very itchy. <laughs> so finally, before we, we actually sign off, 
I'd just like to uh, to show you this little beauty. Now, the chap I was talking about before that wanted to um, to meet Simon, he's bought something very similar to this. And again, it's that simplicity of form, beautiful, beautiful knife. It's not cluttered, it's not got loads of file work and silly things going on. Everything Simon does, it's a good, usable blade. And, and I just, every single one, I love them. So, this one's probably got a story as well. Um, well, kind of, it's very similar to the other one in actual fact. This is from the same section of walnut as the other knife I showed. Um, again, cut at a slight angle so you get the grain coming around it at a diagonal. Um, I bought a run of these and did these and um, this one, again, didn't really get to any customers because my girlfriend took it. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah. this is why we've got the, we've managed to get hold yeah, of another one. Yeah. yeah, this one's hers, but um, unfortunately for her, she's not quite up the priority list as the customer, so it hasn't got a sheath done yet. But um, yeah, same piece of walnut, came down in the 87 Hurricane in the village where I was living. Um, again, because it's got quite a small handle, it's quite useful to have a lanyard on there. If you're going to use that for just even battening small things, it's quite handy to have your hands out the way. A little bit more to hold on to on the end of the knife. Um, helps you get it out the sheath as well, because it's a neck knife. I like quite a nice tight fit on them, so that's going to help you, you get the thing out. A um, bit of roe deer antler on there just to hold it all together. Again, friction fit. That one will move. You can adjust it up to um, your own hand size. Um, Enzo blade from Finland again. This one's stainless, so it's got a little bit more because um, it's going to be around your neck. You know, it might it's going to be not under your coat as it were necessarily. You might catch a bit more rain, so it's a stainless blade. Um, I think it's 12C27 that one. Yeah, um, nice metal, holds a good edge. Um, easy little knife to use. Nice little carver as well. Um, useful for all sorts of other things, cleaning out fish, stuff like that. Great. So in conclusion, what can I say? Um, fantastic workmanship great knives Simon um, a great bloke as well so you can't get better than that this is top British workmanship this is good as it gets so if you're after a really good knife um, a personal knife that you can you know take to the grave with you um, something that's not gonna break it's not gonna fall to bits um, Simon stands be behind his work a hundred percent so if you'd like one please check out the links at the bottom of the video and um, get in touch with Simon. Thanks for watching. This is Mad Dave. See you on the next video.